Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher, a UK-based freelance web and mobile applications developer. Today I'm going to be talking about my web development predictions for 2018. Before I jump into any of that though, I just want to say that I will not be talking about net neutrality simply because I don't know enough about it. I haven't given myself enough time to research it, to listen to other people's views about it and so forth. Therefore, I don't think I'm in a position to talk about it here. If, when I decide to do so on my channel, then I want to have enough research done beforehand to and feel comfortable enough to even talk about it. I highly recommend everybody to look and hear what other people have to say and do their own research on, on net neutrality. Okay, with that out the way, let's talk about my first web development prediction for 2018. This is going to be the implications of General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR for short. Essentially, GDPR is a set of regulations that websites and data providers have to adopt and conform to in order to store user data. If they don't, there's severe consequences, severe fines and so forth. Some of the regulations, and I certainly won't go through all of them here, are data portability. That's moving user data from one thing to another. There is breach notification. So that is being told to notify that you have a breach and following a procedural process when you have a data breach. You may have read quite recently that Uber has had a data breach that wasn't known for some time. Well, I got a feeling that's going to change in GDPR, in GDPR world. Also, the right to be forgotten. Okay, so that's the right to have your data removed from an application from a system. So there's going to be some technical challenges along the way. I think that there'll be certain libraries, certain, not necessarily frameworks, but lots of shared open source code around how we handle user information. There's also going to perhaps be off of the back of GDPR technical standards to solve the regulations that GDPR is trying to enforce. Now, I believe that there's going to be quite a few um, notifications of data breaches. I think that companies, at the moment, when they get a data breach, depending on perhaps their size, depending on what kind of data breach they are, a lot of them keep stum. A lot of companies don't actually say a thing. It's only the big companies. It's only when money is involved. It's only when, you know lots of personal information is actually being compromised, it gets known. And for instance, in Uber's case, it wasn't known for a very long time after it was at the, after there was a data breach. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I think also that a lot of companies, perhaps companies who haven't even heard of GDPR right now because they've had their head in the sand, uh, will get caught out with that. So I do think there is implications to this and I do think that we'll be seeing those certainly after May next year because that's when it's going to become enforced. Now the second prediction for 2018 is HTTPS. Now I know that this is something that has been bubbling around for a long long time. Google has said back in 2015 that it will start promoting websites or pushing websites further up the, the rankings if they have HTTPS. And it, they've started to roll this out fine, but I think that more websites are going to be HTTPS in 2018. Not only that, but I believe that more third-party uh, applications are going to be HTTPS as well, so that includes APIs and stuff like that. For instance, if you've got a website and you require to use a third-party application and that application isn't running HTTPS, maybe you're running in an iframe, then you're going to yourself going to have some errors because you're a secure website pulling in insecure information. So I think that there's going to be a push on those third parties to increase 
their security to encrypt their data traffic as well. Now, earlier this year, it was known that about half of the websites in the world were HTTPS. Now, you could see that as a fantastic win, but actually that means that about 50% of all websites are not encrypted, which in my opinion is not good enough. I think that's going to push to at least 80% by the end of next year. I think what's happening is that websites that aren't HTTPS are actually fairly small websites. I know myself, I own a couple of those, but small e-com sites as well. I think what's going to happen is once they realize that Google are pushing them down past their competitors, they'll start taking note and start acting upon that. One of the reasons why I think HTTPS uptake isn't as good as I would like is down to money. Now, I realize that there are free services out there like Let's Encrypt and, and stuff like that. But to get a proper secure certificate, you really need to buy it from a trusted provider. OK, and they can cost a lot of money. So I think money is the driving force to push people to have HTTPS. I think what's going to happen is HTTPS certificates are going to be cheaper next year. I think they're going to be provided with hosting packages as perhaps bolt-ons, that kind of thing. I think that once the companies and their management teams start realizing that Google is not ranking them as high as perhaps their competitors, and they're actually losing uh, traffic, therefore losing sales, they'll be able to put a value on this and go, you know what, that that really expensive uh, certificate, that HTTPS certificate, we kind of need that right now. And therefore, more people will jump onto that. Okay, so we've got GDPR and the implications of that. We've also got HTTPS. Let's now talk about something a little bit more exciting perhaps, let's talk about artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is something that I've mentioned before in a previous web chat. I'll put a link to that in this video as well. But I think we can discuss it in a little bit more detail. Artificial intelligence in smaller websites. I think there's going to be frameworks around those kind of things or perhaps libraries around those that look at the data that you currently have on your system and build trends around that, build, you know, almost um, user behavior driven engines and stuff like that. I also believe that it's going to help with uh, travel websites, with, as I mentioned before, with agile, with chat bots and all of that kind of thing. I think that they will be less of perhaps a gimmick on a website that is now seen right now to something that is actually usable. So you're actually talking to a robot on a chatbot and you're actually setting things up. You're actually building things or you're actually buying things or you're questioning things. I mean, back in the day, you used to have a frequently asked questions uh, page, which is fine, but just imagine if you can actually search for that kind of thing with keywords and something actually comes back with you with a notification and says, you know, this has been asked this amount of times, you know, this is something that it normally gets asked at this point in this process of this website, um, then, you know, let's give you the answer and all of that kind of thing. And therefore, I think the notifications are going to become more intelligent to the user. Now, I believe that the notifications can also lead on to something else. And this is the next prediction. This is real-time notifications. Now, I certainly know that we have uh, push notifications and all of that jazz, okay? I also know that obviously we have email. However, email is usually stored in a queue and then sent on a cron job, on some sort of chronological job after an action has happened. The push notifications will send you a message saying perhaps you've, you know, you've, your delivery is here and so forth. But I think with artificial intelligence, with real time notifications, there is something else that is starting to happen, starting to evolve. Imagine, for instance, you're sat down watching Netflix on an internet connected TV. You've got your laptop open on your lap. 
you've got perhaps your mobile phone unlocked and ready, and you've probably got a tablet as well in the room. That's a whole manner of devices that you've surrounded yourself for. I think there's going to be some form of intelligence that knows what is on what screen, who is using that, and their behavior on those devices. For instance, if you have a look at Facebook on your, your desktop, it's going to be different to Facebook on your tablet, which is going to be different from Facebook on your mobile phone. The, the feeds, they're going to be slightly different because Facebook is tracking how you behave differently on those devices. That could happen all in all sorts of different avenues in web development. It's not just Facebook feeds. It could be adverts. It could be film and all of those kind of things. Also, you don't really want to get five notifications all at once when you're actually actively running on one device. The other devices should know that you've been notified and you're actually actively working on that piece of kit. And therefore, you won't suddenly get a hundred pinging noises because something has happened. Now, the next prediction that I'm going to make, and I've got quite a few predictions, but this I think is going to be my last one that I'm going to mention right now, is Web VR. So that's virtual reality with the web. We've come a long way in Web VR already. It's certainly not, I would say, consumer ready right now. Uh, it's perhaps tech ready, I guess you could call it. It's 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 good enough for the nerds. But I think we're moving round a corner, if you will, in web VR. It's going to become more user friendly. It's going to become more user driven. Web VR is going to be very interesting, especially in the education sort of areas, also in the health areas as well. At the moment, we're seeing a lot of games and all of that kind of gimmicky kind of stuff to test out the virtual reality, and that's fine. That is the way things are going to go. And it certainly means that we're going to get more games, more virtual reality games that we can play in the web. And I think the web VR standard is a brilliant, brilliant thing. And I think that's going to just keep evolving and changing and growing and getting better and better and better as the year progresses. But I'm going to say that I think that there is going to be advertisers looking at WebVR and trying to work out how they can advertise or use WebVR virtual reality as a platform to advertise things. Just imagine you could be watching a trailer and actually being inside that trailer. Now with virtual reality, you've obviously got 360 video because you can look quite literally anywhere. You can walk quite literally anywhere within the or the realms, the de defined dimensions that you are given. So that opens up a lot of possibility, I believe, to advertisers. And I think 2018, we're going to start seeing some of those advertisers actually developing on virtual reality platforms. I'm not too sure right now how that's going to manifest, but I do believe that that is going to happen. In all of these predictions, you can kind of follow a trend, which is money, okay? Money, money, money. That is where the the technology is going to be centered around, or at least where the money is going to be thrown at. So with GDPR, you want to be saving money by becoming GDPR compliant. With HTTPS, you want to be saving money because you want to be up there in the rankings. You don't want to be below your competitors. So you will fork out for HTTPS. For real-time notifications, you want to be notifying your customers if you're perhaps looking at um, hotels, for example, on a real-time basis, or when hotels are available, when hotels are not available, how many rooms are in this hotel and so forth. You don't suddenly want to get an email back after you've done a booking saying, sorry, we don't have those rooms available because someone else was looking at the same time as you. You don't want to be consumed by all of the notifications in every single device. I come up here and I have a look on my iPad and I've got 15 Facebook notifications because it's not smart enough to know that I've actually viewed the notifications on my mobile phone. So there's going to be money invested in that too. And especially with web, web VR, advertisers are going to be like, hmm, how can I make that into an advertising platform? So 
in all of these predictions, I kind of think that you need to follow where the money is going to go. And I believe that that is one of those areas. Now, I've got quite a few other predictions for 2018, but I'm going to leave those for future web chats. If you think that what I've said is pretty far-fetched, or if you agree with what I'm saying, or if you've got predictions yourself, put them in the comment section below. Let's start a discussion. It's always nice to hear from you. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe because I do a web chat like this every Friday, every Tuesday. I do a tutorial on web programming. So I've been focusing recently on PHP and MySQL, but I've got all sorts of other tutorials. I've got tutorials on Docker, on JavaScript, CSS, HTML, all of that kind of stuff. I also have a bunch of Skillshare courses and Udemy courses as well. So if you're a junior developer or if you just want to brush up on your skills, do check out the links down below. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone, and I will see you again next time. Cheers. Bye.